I wonder where he went. Maybe he's taking on hold up them rocks someplace. Well, if he does, we'll have a hard time tracking. There isn't very much snow over there. Sing it up, cowboy. What's the idea of you fellas chasing me, anyway? They're not chasing you. They're after me. You just have to get mixed up in this, that's all. Well, that helps some. But uh, why don't you put away the artillery? No, I've, I've got a little favor to ask of you. Yeah. My horse is all in, and I've got a long ways to go. How about you and I changing mounts? Well, I guess under the circumstances, the best thing I can do is agree with you. Right smart figuring. Get going. No gun, eh? <laughs> I never carry one. Give me that hat. Peel a saddle off that horse. anything of them? No. Well, I figured that hombre headed right for town. He's too wise to hide out in these rocks. Looks like he got thrown away. I'm not so sure. We'll look around a little more. That's what they were after. Can't be far away. Maria, I kept 
giorno che ti vede tutto dentro a sto cuore Maria mia Howdy. How do you do? Having trouble? Well, sir, I must admit, I fear, that this is one occasion where Dr. Halliday's wonder remedies are of no assistance. <laughs> well, I think I got an old Western remedy that'll fix that. Can it be possible that I've overlooked a remedy? Well, you know, you can know too little in this world. Ah, oh, yeah, that's gonna be easy. Now, just what do you propose to do? We'll get it. Give me a left on this. Tony, help the gentleman. Yeah, that's gonna work all right. Now, Tony, you get the wheel, and when I raise it up, slide it on there. Yes, Tony, uh, when we raise it, you just put the wheel right on there. All uh, right, you ready? All right, now, now slide that wheel on there. Slide it right on there, Tony. Come on, you slide it under there. Right underneath there. I do is put the nut on, but keep it on this time. Well, sir, that is phenomenal. One of the most remarkable feats I have ever witnessed. Just put the nut on, Tony. Oh, how do you do? Oh. We've stuck here for two hours. Well, two I... hours and ten minutes, to be exact. Lucky, you're well named, for you're now meeting face to face with America's most celebrated dispeller of human ills and grievances, Dr. Halliday himself. Well, I never heard of you, Doc, but I'm sure glad to meet you. Tony, come on, let's get these things back in the wagon. Oh, sure, sure, we gotta get to the banana mine. Sunlight of the range. You are about to see the great Doc Halliday do some manual labor. Well, I never was much on watching other people work, Doc, so I'll help you. Any luck? No, he's not down there. Say, I don't think you told me your name. I'm Ann Thornton. Oh, that's a pretty name. Thank you. Any uh, relation to the Doc there? Oh, no, I just worked for him. You see, I had to come to this part of the country, and there was no other way I could do it. Oh, I see. Your folks live around here somewhere. No. My parents are dead. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I... Oh, that's all right. Well, back, I reckon that pot hound got clean away. I have an uncle that lives here, Jim Thornton. He owns the Bonanza Mine with my father. Say, what do you do with the show, anyway? Oh, I dance and sometimes try to sing a bit. I even try a bit of fancy shooting. Oh, do you use this? <laughs> yes, but not with solid shot. Oh, I get it. Just get around here. Wait, over here? Yes, and let me put it right on your back. Oh, all right. You grab it from it. the behind it, from the back to the front. That's it. All right. Well, it's easy. Now you got it. Yeah, I got all it. Right. Yeah, you got That's it. That's it. All right, easy. Now you got it. Easy. Now, uh, Take it easy, Tony, with that log there. What'd you say your name was, Ann? Uh-huh. I think this is the place enough. Come down easy. Never mind about it. Now, Tony, I'm not the least bit fatigued. We've got all the heavy work done. I think you can take care of the rest of it. Just put everything in its natural place. What else can you do with a gun, Lucky? Oh, almost anything. Well, show us something. Well, give me some more shells. Here's a whole sock full. Oh, fine. 
we done all of the heavy work. Yeah, we. You mean me? Got any Indians with your show, Doc? No, but we'd like to have. I'll draw you one on that box over there. I've seen something mighty interesting, Bat. What was that? His mate's coming in with that medicine show. And they bogged down at the clock. Now, what's that? What are you headed for? That's great. Well, there's your engine, Doc. Boy, I could use an act like that. Lucky, how would you like to join my show? Well, I, uh... What do you do, gentlemen? I reckon you're that Thornton girl, ain't you? Yes, how do you know? You seen anything of that no count uncle of yours? Well, I'll, I expect you'll find him down to mine. We were just on our way there now. You sure he ain't hiding in that wagon. Now look here, my good man. You keep your trap shut. We're after Jim Thornton, we're aiming to get him. Suck the wagon, boys. Hey, wait a minute. What do you want to go on? By the way, was he a slim, dark complexion fellow with a slight limp? Yes. Yeah. And riding a bay horse? Yeah. Oh, well, then. He's heading for town. Do you know my uncle? The fellow you were just describing, Jim Thornton. Well, uh, I, uh, see. That is, I, I didn't know him, but he's, he's the fellow I brushed by down the road a ways. Listen, Curly, you might just as well know it right now. Me and the boys have got possession of the Bonanza mine, and we ain't wanting you around there. But the mine belongs to Uncle and myself. You can't keep me away. You ain't going to find your Uncle Jim there. And what's more, possession is nine points of the law. But what am I going to do? I have no other place to go. You. Uncle Jim is expecting me. I reckon a gal as good looking as you are can get by. That is, if uh, she ain't too choosy. We can do without your company, mister. Now you get drifting before I put the Indian sign on you. Ain't no sign of him in that wagon, Bat. As I said before, we don't like your company. Get drifting. Now get going. Go ahead, on. Go on, get drifting. One shot's in the hands, it'll scare four in the bushes. <laughs> well, now what? Now up. We're going back and pick up Jim's trail. He's around here someplace. Aw. Oh, don't feel badly, Miss Ann. If that mine you're talking about belongs to you, nobody's going to keep you from getting all that belongs to it. That's right. We'll engage the best of legal talent and combat these ruffians. As I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted, could I persuade you to become a feature attraction with my show? Yeah. Providing you tell me all about Anne, the mine, and her uncle. She'll tell you all about it herself. That mine is the only thing she has in this world. That's his saddle, all right. Where do you suppose the gold's going to? Well, maybe hidden around here somewhere. Let's give a look. where your gold is. Well, let's get going. Wait a minute. I want to get my hands on that dust. I ain't so sure you're going to find the dust down there. Why? 
I just happen to remember that cowboy asking if Thornton walked with a limp. Out the line. Good evening, my friends of Poker Flats. This is indeed a surprise and a pleasure to see so many of you out to welcome I and my company. As you all know, I didn't come here to sell you anything. No, no, my friend. Dr. Halliday prides himself that his one motive in life is to relieve the pains of his fellow men, the pains and aches of his fellow men and uh, ladies. And now, my friends, with possible pride, I want to introduce the members of Dr. Halliday's Wonder Show. First, Senor Antonio Garibaldi. <laughs> the direct descendant of the immortal Beethoven. The wizard of the collapsible symphonium. What's that? I reiterate and emphasize the collapsible symphonium. How on tarnation do you spell it? You don't spell it, brother. You play it. <laughs> Next, a product of your own wide open spaces. Seventeen times, I repeat, seventeen times, my friend, world's champion cowboy, Lucky Carson. <laughs> Mr. Carson will demonstrate his skill with firearms. <laughs> My friends, the sensation of four continents in as many cities, the great, the greatest living testimonial to the miraculous powers of Dr. Halliday's wonder remedy, Madame Fatima. See those muscles twist and turn like so many reptiles? Did you? Of course you did. And think, my friends, just think. Only six months ago, this little lady was a hopeless invalid. Hopeless, I say, until Dr. Halliday's wonder remedies restored her to perfect health. What do you think of the show at the Bees and Eats, huh? If I said what I thought, I'd probably lose my job. Oh, you better not think it too much loud. And think of it, my friend. Think. They are guaranteed to cure cold, sore throat, neuritis, arthritis, bronchitis, and uh, is there a broken leg in the crowd? Sure, I got one. Tough luck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> In all sorts of internal disorders, house spades knee, riders cramp, and I don't mean horse riders. Uh, would it cure rheumatism? My dear lady, positively, absolutely. Look at this gorgeous bottle. Smell its contents, its delightful odor. What's this, Doctor? Rheumatism. And remember, my friends, we are here for your entertainment, and it's all free. One dollar, madam, yeah? if you please. I thank you. Yes, my friends, it's all free. Keep that gal away from the mine. Never mind about the girl. You notice that hat band on that cowboy? Yeah. You ever see it before? Why, sure. That belongs to Jim Thornton. 
Yeah, and that's his hat, too. Come on. Where'd you get that hat you were wearing? Oh, this one? I traded with a guy. That guy was Jim Thornton, wasn't it? I don't believe he told me his name. Well, I'm telling you it was Jim Thornton. And what's more, what'd you do with them saddlebags he was carrying? And the dust that was in them? You guys must be local. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Say, I'll make a deal with you. You give us that dust, and me and the boys will pull out and let the girl have the mine. Mine? Yeah. I don't know anything about any mine. Now I know you fellas are local. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you kindly step up closely, Lucky Carson will demonstrate his skill with firearms, assisted by our little lady. This remarkable feat, my dear friends, has made Lucky Carson a terror, especially where bad men are concerned. In fact, he is known as Lucky Terror. Never expected to see you two critters here unless I brought you. I've got some news for you, Sheriff. Huh? Well, must be mighty unpleasant. Yes, sir. You just seem to be grieving yourself to death about it. in our crowd who would like to assist Lucky Carson in his next remarkable feat of marksmanship? Anybody at all? Yes, I'd like to try Well, that's it. very sweet of you. <laughs> now, Doc, if uh, you'll just uh, supply the little lady with a poker chip and a cigarette. A I poker chip? We well, let me see. Just stand back against the board and put your hand out. Now, that's right. Just uh, just hold the poker chip in your fingers there. Put your arm out a little. That's fine. Now, don't be nervous. Just stand there still. I'll probably only shoot the tip of your finger off. You ready now? Hold still. Just take it easy because everything's going to be all right. That's all right. it. Now, put the cigarette in your mouth. Stand over against the board. That's fine. Now, just pull your nose in a little bit. That's that stuff. You ready? All right, just hold still. Think, my friends, all that has been said about Dr. Halliday's wonder remedies. A sure cure for corns, bunions, earache, toothache, and dandruff. These ain't dandruff. Dandruff or baldness, one and the same thing, neighbor. Why do you know I once spilled a few drops of Wonder Tonic on a watermelon? Hair started to grow immediately. Five minutes later, a man shot it for a porcupine. And now, my friends, for the next five minutes, just five minutes, my assistants will pass among you and for the small insignificant sum of one dollar, deliver to you one dollar, how about you, little lady? Will you have a Oh, you want her to have one. I'll bet that's your wife. Who's the next? Oh, you want a bottle? Hang you too much. That's fine. Next, you want the please. All right, one more bottle after this. You want it? Put it. You want it? Oh, so long, Oh, so long. 
I'm taking over this here show. Keep an eye on him, Hank. Both eyes. Got any guns on you? Don't do that, please. Young fella, I arrest you for the murder of Jim Thornton. Uncle Jim, murdered? Talk. Listen to Bat. He'll tell you all about it. He'll tell you what happened. Sure, Jim's dead. We just brought his body into town. How do you know that cowboy did it? He's wearing Jim's hat, ain't he? Looks like it. Oh, Sheriff, this just couldn't have happened. It could and did. The body's over the office. We're going to hold the inquest in the morning. Come on, cowboy. Why, this is preposterous. I don't know if that's what killed him or not, but we're holding you till we find out. Sheriff, I'm quite sure Lucky had nothing to do with this. Well, if he didn't, we'll find that out later on. But how about the Stromans and the stuff? We've got to lock them up. Hey, Sheriff. They want to lock their stuff up before I lock them up. All right, let them put away their clapping, but don't forget to keep the eye on them. This is your last chance to purchase a bottle of Dr. Sold out, Doctor. Another soul save. You better come along with the office with us while we talk to the door. Get out of the way, please. Yeah, all right. Get him out of here. Have to make yourself come home over there, young lady. I'll try and pick out a nice room for the young man. What are we going to do about this, Lucky? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll get out of it somehow. Hello? Here am I just speaking. Can I have you? Oh, no. Listen, darling. Uh, something has happened here in town, and uh, you'd better get that spare room of ours fixed up. I'm bringing a young lady home to stay with us tonight. I'll bet this is Bat Nolan's work. Well, he and Uncle Jim are always having trouble. Why? No, no, darling. I said I was bringing the young lady home to stay with us tonight. Yes, sweetheart. My wife never did understand me. Oh, come on. Hey. Keep it up. Hey, sir, if you have to lock me up like this, I didn't kill that man. You're not guilty. It'll come out of the hearing in the morning. Get on in. There's Major's out of home. And uh, what, Squire, may I ask, is the reason for your confinement in this Bastille? Murder. <laughs> A most common occurrence in this country. Think nothing of it. Why, I'll have you free and clear in the morning. As I said, think nothing of it. Proceed, Mr. Coroner. May it please the court. My examination of the body of the deceased shows no evidence of foul play. Well, we may as well proceed with the examination of these suspects, Mr. Sheriff. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. Inasmuch as the life and liberty of Mr. Carson and ourselves may be jeopardized by this hearing, I demand, as 
is our constitutional rights that we be allowed to retain legal representation before proceeding. Well, you're entitled to that. But we only got one lawyer in this here county. Well, one lawyer's all we need, I guess. Where will we find this barrister? Well, we've got him right here. But it'll cost you five dollars to bail him out. Oh, Sheriff. Yeah? Bring Mr. Wheeler into court. Yes, Your Honor. Sheriff. Come on out. I fear this generous gesture is wasted. It isn't uh, that is, well, uh, I can't pay my usual fine. Your fine's been paid, Wheeler, and there's some clients waiting for you in the office. Clients? Yeah. Awaiting me? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Sheriff. You haven't got a little nip on your hip, have you? Yeah. I presume that you're one of the accused? Sir, I am not. Meyer, think nothing of it. What, again? Oh, no, stupid, not there. Your client's there. Pardon? And may I inquire uh, which one of you is the defendant? I guess that's me. Oh, my companion from the Bastille. Well, well. And would you like to retain me as your counsel? How much does it cost? How much have you got? We would like to have you represent us collectively. Collectively? Well, now I would be glad to represent you, but not collectively. I must have a cash retainer in advance. Collections are so bothersome. By collectively, I meant that we desired that you defend us as a group. I am prepared to give you a reasonable cash retainer. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, then, are you uh, prepared to... Uh, uh, could you advance me, say, about... Uh, uh, Six dollars? <clears throat> On second thought, uh, I think you better make it eight. If it please the court, I would like to ask for a recess of about one hour in which to familiarize myself with the case of my client. Request granted. I declare this court adjourned for one hour. Ah, oh, what's the use of all the delay? Let's get this over with. It has just occurred to me that I must secure some personal fortitude for my office before proceeding. It will only take a few moments. Now, just be patient, and I'll be right back. I'll be back. Good morning. I'll, I'll be seeing you. Wait a minute. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, me. <laughs> Uh, Thornton said that the same Umbries who had been chasing me were really after him. He took my hat and was going to make me trade horses, but his animal got spooky and backed over the cliff, pulling him along with it. And we are to understand that you did not know that this man was Jim Thornton. Right. And what did you do after he went over the cliff? Well, I started on a town. Met Doc on the show, just as I told you before. Have you any idea as to the identity of these men who were chasing you?
Sure. There's a four of them right there. Mr. Moulton, I shall have to ask you to take the stand. I want you to explain why chasing the deceased. We wasn't chasing Thornton. We seen that hombre was after him. So we figured we'd just help old Jim out. Oh. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. But uh, if the court please, uh, I request a few minutes interview with my client in private. Uh, request granted. Uh, take him into my private office. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> I slipped. <clears throat> now, my boy, you're in a mighty tight fix. And after considering all the evidence, there's only one conclusion that I can come to. I don't see how I could be in such a tight fix with such a brainy, wide-awake attorney to defend me. Mm, thank you, thank you. Then you admit that you did not actually see Carson firing at the deceased. Yes, I admit it. That's all, Your Honor. You take your seat. Yes. You used to make it a talk to the people. Give them one nice, nice speech. Yes, do, Doc. My closing address. Yes, that's it. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I have a word? Why, certainly. Proceed. In permeating your cogitations or in articulating your superficial rentimentalities, beware of platitudinous ponderosity and let your extemporaneous philological and philosophical conglomeration abound in your intelligibilities. I think you're right. I thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, it seems to me we're not getting anywhere with all this. The only definite fact brought out in this case is that Miss Thornton is now the legal heir to the Bonanza mine. The court finds that the deceit met his death by accident. Therefore, all the witnesses are dismissed. Oh, oh so that we congratulate you, Doctor, but that's what it was. I thank you, madam. Uh, I want to talk to you, Vet. Uh, what do you want with me? I want to tell you that you've got to give up possession of the Bonanza mine at Miss Thornton's demand. You understand? <laughs> She's welcome to it. It ain't no good, no how. Dr. Halliday, I want to congratulate you, sir. That was one of the greatest speeches I ever heard. That lucky fella. Evidently still in conference with his attorney. We'll have to tell him there ain't no charge against him now. <laughs> but look at that. What? Confound you. Where's Lucky? Sir, you always know me give best advice possible. Yes, yes, yes. Where's Lucky? Well, under the circumstances, the best advice I could give that young fella mm -hmm. was to him to get as far away from here as possible and as soon as possible. What? You mean he ran away thinking we was going to find him guilty? Sure. Why not? You always find me guilty, don't you? Why, you... I guess you've seen everything now, Miss Thornton. 
outside of your Uncle Shag. Would you like to take a look at that? Yes, I think I would. All right, let's go. Say, Doc, you think that this is going to work? Is it going to work? Why, Tony, with my knowledge of the intricacies of chemistry, I'll prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this mine will pay us a million dollars. It's a lot of money. Say, but what do you got in it? No use of talking, Tony. Hard work has its reward. I don't know what you're talking about, but this is pretty heavy. Well, I reckon I better give you a hand to straighten up this place. Looks like a cyclone struck it. Doesn't look very homey, does it? Now, all that's left to do, Tony, is to add Dr. Halliday's wonder extractor, then gather up the gold. Oh, Sheriff, come here, man. Come here and look what I found. Wait a minute. You better take off of that ring. You might lose him. And then it may be bad luck. Luck. Luck, my dear man, may visit the fool, but it does not sit down with him. If Cleopatra's nose had been one inch shorter, the history of the world might have been changed. Oh, the longer the nose, the more she knows, huh? Precisely. <laughs> That's why you know everything, huh, Doc? Mm. Well, it's coming fine. Look, Uncle Jim's diary. Diary? Uh-huh. I thought the mine played out until today. Found pocket in new shaft. Pocket? What's a pocket? Pocket? That's a lot of gold that gathers in the crevice in the ground. Doc, look I what... see it. I see it, Tony. It's gold, Tony. Gold! Gold! Here, Bat knows I found the gold. He's keeping me a prisoner. Prisoner? I always said that Bat was no good. If anything should happen to me, blame Bat. He knows the mine is worthless except for the gold I took from the pocket. About $50,000 worth. I... Let me... I, let me, I uh... Oh, well, he didn't finish what he was writing. Looks like Bat knows more about this than he told at the hearing. I wish Lucky was here. That's an idea. Let's wait. Maybe he'll show up. In the meantime, we look for that gold your uncle's talking about. Keep my eye on this bat and his gang. I've been a sort of itching to get him behind the bars anyhow. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. See you later. I want to see if I can find that lucky fellow. Bye. Oh. Hey, young fella, I want to see you. Hey, I want to see you. Oh, Lucky, the sheriff was just... Yeah, I seen him, but he ain't gonna see me. 
Hey, where you going? Looks like we got him now. He's taking the gold into the mine with him. Did you tell Lucky I wanted to see him? Yes, I told him, but he wouldn't wait. Oh. Guess he was afraid you wanted to arrest him. Oh, consign him. Well, then what are we waiting for? We'll just wait until the sheriff leaves and then go get it. Get out of sight. to look after things that I can get Bat and his gang under lock and key. Oh, it is gold. I told oh. you my wonder extractor would do the trick. <laughs> well, I reckon that won't be hard to do. I reckon not. <laughs> Lucky, look what we found. Gold. Gold. Real gold. Look. That does look like gold, all right. And just think, Uncle Jim thought this mine was worthless. Hey, you know, before we believe that, there's some stuff in there I'd like to see put through that processing machine. Ah, I may be a bit premature, but that's just what I was about to do. I mixed an extra large batch of Wonder Extractor to further demonstrate the miraculous powers of my new discovery. Up to it, Doc. You know, I think I'm going to like this mine. Yeah, I kind of think you will. Maria, to make this. <laughs> we got a good joke on you, all right. We find a goal in this mine. Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm not thinking, you know, the stuff. Wait a minute. What are you doing here? Wait a minute. Maybe you can't go saddlebags around here. Look around, Margo. Me out of these you know, Ann, I just got a hunch there's a lot of gold in this place. Well, if there is, I'm going to change the name of it. Let me see, what can I call it? I think I'll call it the, the Lucky Mine. Well, maybe that's not a bad idea. Be heard all over the place. Come on, let's get out and check. What are we going to do? I'll keep him busy trying to catch me. You get your horse over, take the sheriff. Go ahead. He couldn't get away. Well, he's in here 
someplace. Of course, we're back in there. Look at sure. Coming here. Oh, Sarah! Sarah! Why, what's the matter, Miss Thornton? Bat and his men are trying to take possession of the mine again. <sighs> Sam, call your boy. I'll deputize him. I ain't got time to get a regular posse from town. All right, Sheriff. Here he is, boys. Come on out of there, Lucky, before I change your nickname. Uh, I want to keep that name. I'm coming out. Now, now looky here. Uh, you fellas got me all wrong. I want to explain this to you. You know, you fellas are making an awful mistake here. You know that, don't you? Never mind the alibis. What'd you do with that gold, puncher? What gold? You know what gold I'm talking about. The gold you took off Jim Thornton. Oh, now, wait a minute. I didn't take any gold. Don't lie to me. We saw you take it into the mine. Suppose you try to find it. See where that track goes? Yeah. Now, you're going to tell us where that gold is? Or take a little trip. Where is it? We're not speaking the English. Put him in the car, boys. Oh, wait a minute here. We ought to have some rope to tie him with, Bat. Never mind tying them. Them rocks will hold them down. We want this to look like an accident. Pile some more rocks on them. Doc, I fix you up. This is your last chance to talk, Lucky. Where's that dust? You'll never find it. That belongs to Miss Thornton. I'll find it if I have to tear that mine apart from one end to the other. Uh, Give him a shot. We'll search that mine till we find that dust. That's the shortest. Where we got that posse? Get your horses, men.
That's it. Hill, you and Wilson wrap those two up. Bring them along. I'm glad you got here when you did, because I ran out of men. Well, perhaps it's just as well. If you kept this up, you'd be having my job. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are you trying to tell us about? You wait a minute. Stop it. You tell them all about it. Go ahead. Doc, what's he trying to explain to us? I am going to conclusively demonstrate the miraculous powers of my wonder extractor. Tony, my pan, please. Yes, yeah, sure. All right. What is that stuff in there? Ore from your wonderful mind, disintegrated by my wonder extractor. Doc, you know there's no gold in this mine. Don't you believe that? I bet you we find the gold in here. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Gold! Gold! 